These are the psychological implications of understanding Tawheed. It is easy to say Allah is one. But is He one in my life? It is, is, he, is He the one for me? Or do I have some other one that I'm running after? Or some other thing that I put before myself? Allah asked this question rhetorically. He says, مَا غَرَّكَ بِرَبِّكَ الْكَرِيمِ What deluded you from your gracious master? What was so important to you that you ran after? That you couldn't come after this? SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. So when he uses this word, هُوَ Allahu Ahad, It's psychological implications. It's implications on our attitude towards Allah. And how we think about our life completely changes. Now there is nothing more important to me than making him happy. Nothing more important to me than him being pleased with me. Nothing more important to me than he forgiving me. Nothing more important to me than he would talk to me on the Day of Judgment telling me that I'm successful. He will look towards me. I will not be from the ones he turns away from. وَلَا يُكَلِّمُهُمُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah will not talk to them on the Day of Judgment. May Allah not make us from those people. These are some of the psychological implications of just internalizing Ahad. Ahad. Just that word. What Allah is saying, subhanAllah. This is who Allah is. This is what He's supposed to do. And I want to conclude because it's time for salah with the following. Uh, we're going to first look at a basic definition of uh, As-Samad. As-Samad al Al-Kafi. Uh, As-Samad is the one who is enough. Al-Ladhi yarji'una ilayhi idha ahtajuhu. The one who they return to whenever they have a need of him. Huwa al-Ladhi yakfihim. He is the one who is enough for them. Wa yasuddu hajatihim wa as'ilatahum al-Ladhi yasmiduna ilayhi. And he is the one who fulfills all of their needs and their question, answers all of their questions, the ones that they attribute to him or turn to him with عند الحاجة, at the time of need. هذا معنى الصمد. This is the meaning of صمد في اللغة. صمد إليه أي توجه إليه. And linguistically speaking, when you use the word صمد as a verb, it means to turn attention towards someone. وطلب منه الحاجة or to demand from them the fulfillment of a need. المصمود إليه هو السيد المتوجه إليه المصمود is the the word masmud is actually what samad implies is the one to whom people turn in time of need another meaning this so that's one meaning I'd like you to remember samad one you turn to in time of need the second meaning samada ilayhi ay qasadahu the second verbal meaning is when you make someone your goal that you aspire to reach them, or you aspire to please them, or you aspire to attain them, etc., etc. When you attribute someone as your goal, they become a samad. So Allah is saying that He is the one we turn to in need, and He's also calling Himself the ultimate goal. He is the goal of what we do. And of course, this is one of the reasons this is called Surah Al-Ikhlas. Because sincerity, ikhlas, is when we do things, and the goal of it is always Allah Azza wa Jal. So that's included in the meaning of a samad. وَالصَّمَدْ أَيْضًا الْغَنِي الَّذِي لَيْسَ فَوْقَهُ أَحَد uh, One of the meanings of samad also is the one who is not in need of anyone else and no one can overpower them or be above them in status or in, uh, in any attribute. الَّذِي لَا عِبَ فِيهِ The one who has no, uh, uh, no blemishes or no faults in him. مِنَ الرِّجَالِ الَّذِي لَيْسَ فَوْقَهُ أَحَد It's used also, for, in, liter- in Arabic literature, it's used for a person also, the one who cannot be overcome. Meaning can't be overcome in battle, you can't outdo them in business, or in their leadership, or in their eloquence, then they're also called a fixture, a samad. Okay, so this is from a linguistic uh, point of view. Additionally, Mufassirun comment, a samad implies عظيم الجلالة That's one thing, that he's, he's incredible and great in terms of his glory. الدائم الخالد it's the ever, he's the everlasting المقصود لقضاء الحاجات we talked about that the one who is turned to to fulfill needs this this is important now شيء صمد the word صمد is used as an adjective also something that is صمد مصمت لا جوف فيه أو جوف له it is uh, referred to as something that is solid with no holes or emptiness inside something that is through and through Pure one thing, like a pure brick of gold could be samad. Or a pure a boulder with no possibility of any air or water getting in could also be called, an attribute of it could be samad. Meaning something absolute and concrete without any flaw. Right? That's, that's one of the meanings. One of the interesting commentaries by Al-Biqa'i rahimahullah in his tafsir, Nafmu durar fi tanasub al-ayati wa sur Commenting on the previous surah, which was the previous surah? Surah Lahab. Surah Lahab talked about a person who thinks he needs no one. He can, everybody needs him because he was the treasurer. Who are we talking about? Abu Lahab. 
And Allah is even after He's done with, now you should know. The only one that is actually as is Allah Azza wa Jal. So there's this contrast. Well, now that the, you know, the, the, His filthy, uh, self-absorbed concept, because He was self-absorbed. His ilah was Himself. He worshipped Himself. He didn't even worship any other religion. And you have to remember what He said when the Messenger invited Him to the religion. You know, there's one time He cursed the Messenger Himself, we reminded ourselves. Tabbalak ali hadha jama'atana. May you be cursed, may your hand, you be destroyed, did you gather us for this? But this other time he cursed the religion. And when he cursed the religion, what was his, uh, what was his criticism? تَبَّلْ لِهَذَا الدِّينَ أَنْ أَكُونَ سَوَىٰ You know, لِهَا أُولَىٰ I will become equal to these people? <laughs> you want me to accept that religion? Where I will have an equal? Because he thinks he has no equal. Now Allah is teaching us, the only one who has no equal is he. He's the only one absolute, and he's the only one that is ahad. Now we get to the logical conclusion. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. There are several things to note here. We'll go through them one by one. The first thing to note here, what is the connection between the previous ayah and Allah saying, He did not give birth to any. He didn't father anyone. Nor is He fathered Himself. Nor is He, the old English term, He didn't beget, nor was He begotten. And I'm using was carefully. Because Allah doesn't say, La yalidu wa la yuladu. La would have been present tense. He does not beget, he will, he, and he is not begotten. Allah used lam, lam. And lam forces the meaning of a verb to the past tense. It forces, so I'm, I'm translating, he did not beget, he did not father, nor was he fathered. So the first thing we have to figure out is the benefit of the past tense in this ayah. Why use the past tense? Why not say he does not father, and he is not fathered? Why not? Well, the, the latter makes logical sense. The fact lam yulad, he wasn't born of anyone. Makes sense, because birth happens in the past. So that makes sense. But why not protect shirk from the future too, by saying, لا يلد. He does not give birth. Well, one of the problems with that would have been, if you say he does not give birth, that doesn't necessarily negate that he did not give. He did not father. So that rooms, leaves room for shirk in the past. Leaves room for shirk in the past. That's, that's one thing. The second thing is, we've already said ahad and as samad which means already there is no, there's not going to be anyone comparable. Having a child, what does it do? A human being begets a human being. A cat gives birth to a cat. You know, a dog to a dog. An animal gives birth to an equal, to someone of the same species. We've already established he can't have a second. That's not possible for him. And this attribution of Allah having ma'ad Allah a son, like the Christian community or some segments of the Jewish community or Allah having daughters like some segments of the mushrikun who said that he took angels as daughters these attributes were not made of the present or the future where were these allegations made from? of the past Isa alayhi salam, Hazayr alayhi salam, the angels all of these concepts are relegated to the past one of the benefits of this past tense is Allah is addressing the falsehoods of the religions that already occurred and in it so, like Abu Bakr al-Baqillani actually commenting on Lam Yalid said, in it there's a miracle of the Qur'an in regards to its predictions. There will be no other religion that claims that God has children that will ever take hold on the earth. Like which religions already took hold? Christianity at the, at the heart of it, right? Think of other religions that give, a, you know, uh, have a concept of God where He gives birth to another. All of them are relegated to what? Pre-Islam. Pretty much all of them pre-Islam. So now here, Allah, Allah addresses that with the problem that already occurs. 